for most of their lives, the 1,200 fishermen who live in this village in the south of India described themselves as slaves. Every one of them was in debt to moneylenders, a debt most had inherited from their fathers. Bharati Dasan inherited a debt of 50,000 rupees, about $800. After spending a minimum of 12 hours at sea, he had to hand over his entire catch to the moneylenders to service the debt. Bharati says the moneylenders were in cahoots with the local traders, who would set the price of the fish far below market value. He was not allowed to trade with anyone else or pay off the entire loan when he had a bumper catch. It was impossible to ever pay off what he owed. We were in a difficult situation. We even shed tears. Even though we were going to sea, we didn't have a happy and peaceful life because on the shore we didn't get a good price for our fish. And in 2004, this difficult situation was made even worse by the tsunami, which destroyed Bharati's boat and nets. He and his wife, Doga Lakshmi, could see no way out of the cycle of debt. We didn't have money for our expenses, so we borrowed more money with interest. When our child fell sick, we had to take her to the hospital. We didn't have the money, we had to borrow it. This is suffering. If it kept going like this, what would happen to our village and our people? We were very sad to think of our future in this village. Then three years ago, Bharati's neighbor Murugai and Manivanan heard that fishermen in a nearby village had formed a group called a fish marketing society through which they collectively paid off their debts. He went to see how it worked. And when he returned, he convinced Bharati and 90 others to join him. As a group, they finally had some bargaining power, and they convinced the village leaders to help them open up the sale of the fish to the highest bidder. When this happened, the corrupt merchants left the village. We could not have removed the merchants as individuals, since we acted as a group. They themselves walked out. The next step was to clear their debts of the moneylenders. To do this, they found support from a local project, which was actually set up to help fishermen recover from the tsunami. But the project team soon saw that the fishermen's debt prevented them from having a sustainable income, which is the only way they could recover from future calamities. It was very essential that we redeem them from this debt, so that they were in a position to then offer their catch for the best price. So the project, with support from the UN's International Fund for Agricultural Development, gave the fish marketing societies a lump sum of money to pay off the members' debts. Although they still need to pay back the money, the societies have appointed their own auctioneers. So every day, numerous merchants buy to purchase the daily catch. Previously, we were like slaves. Now we have freedom in selling. Everybody has this feeling. Now we're getting a good price for our hard work. And it's only possible due to our unity. Bharati had a bumper catch today, and he's happy with the price he gets at the auction. He collects his money at the society office, where a percentage is deducted to pay back his debt. He also pays for insurance, which has been collectively negotiated by society members. Even with these deductions, his income has increased by 30%, and he can send his children to a private school. In just one year, he's paid off his inherited debt, and he's taken out a further loan to buy more nets. I was liberated from the slavery life. I feel very happy. I now have peace of mind. So far, the project has worked with more than 30 fish marketing societies, releasing over 1,100 fishermen from their debt to the moneylenders. With more societies set up each year, fishermen all along this coast will soon share Bharati's feeling of liberation.